Welcome to In The Loop with Larry. This is our February 2024 edition. And today we're going to talk about another uh, discussion on the domestic content that has really become, made it more confusing than it ever was before. It's almost as if it's uh, an illusion or uh, it could be very confusing and misleading. And so we don't want you to be misled. We want you to uh, keep an eye out for some of the things that we've seen in the marketplace and bring you up to speed. So if you remember from our prior videos, and if you haven't seen them, go to the Solar Energy Channel, take a look. We have videos on the Inflation Reduction Act and all of the adders that go along with it. And there were really three 10% adders. So remember the federal uh, investment tax credits at 30% tax credit, but you can increase that by another 10% uh, for each of these adders, a subsequent 10%, 10% if you're in an energy community, and there's a map for that. It's already been, for the most part, figured out, easy to do. 10% for if you're in a low income area, and there's an additional 10%, you could qualify there as well. And we have a video on that too. And then finally, the third 10% adder is the domestic content adder. And this is the adder that at this point in time, has still the least amount of clarity, the most confusion. All of the other adders have somewhat been worked out at this point, uh, but the domestic content is the one that is really still confusing, not clear, and clearly needs to be worked out. And so the domestic content adder, if you remember, is that you get the 10% if the uh, solar project meets the requirements of the uh, of the IRA guidelines for domestic content. And there's really two parts to that. There's the iron and steel for everything that's foundational. If it doesn't have 100% iron and steel uh, for foundational products, then it does not qualify. The whole entire project disqualified. It does not. So 100% of the iron and steel needs to be uh, made in the USA um, and then you do qualify, assuming that the rest of the components, which are the manufactured components, as they call them, qualify. And currently, of those manufactured components, the forty uh, percent of those manu forty percent of the total cost of those manufactured components needs to it needs to be at least forty percent in order for the these uh, components to to qualify for the the 10%. And that 40% is going to increase to, I believe, 55% by 2027. Uh, but currently it's, it's 40%. And it's really focused on modules and inverters and optimizers. It doesn't include the balance of system items or bolts or screws or not. That's not what they're referring to here. They're talking really specifically aiming at modules, solar panels, inverters, and optimizers and that they are made in the USA. It's very easy. If the, if the manufactured product is 100% made in the USA from USA parts, it qualifies for the 10% domestic content. If it, if it isn't and parts are not all made in the United States, then there's a calculation that what they call the adjusted percentage rule where they do this calculation based on the cost that the manufacturer pays to build it that 40% of those costs of the uh, manufactured subcomponents will equal the 40% or more. And it's up to the manufacturer to certify that their product meets these requirements. And so it's very complex, very convoluted. We have not seen uh, any products at this point that qualify or a letter from a manufacturer. So remember, the onus is on you, the taxpayer. When you take this tax credit, it's your responsibility when you file your taxes to have the documentation necessary to prove that your system qualified and you took that 10% and you have the documentation for that extra 10%. It's our job as the installer to provide that with you. And we get that documentation either from our distributors who get it from the manufacturers or directly from the manufacturers. But it's up to the manufacturer to generate this letter and say that, I am the manufacturer of this product, either a solar panel or inverter, and I certify that this solar panel or inverter meets all of the criteria of the Inflation Reduction Act for the domestic content 10% adder. And that is the documentation that you're looking for. If it doesn't have that, your pro system probably does not qualify. And again, at this point, we haven't seen that yet, that any of them qualify. Um, 
So Larry, we've had we ran into an issue where we had uh, one a distributor mentioned that they believed that uh, uh, one of their solar panels that they were distributing qualified for this Inflation Reduction Act. Yeah, so it was kind of a unique situation uh, where the the distributor was saying that they have installers that are using this module to qualify. And so I requested documentation because that's very interesting to me. I mean, obviously my ears perked up. We want to get the extra 10%. I asked for documentation. The documentation that was given to me was documentation for BAA compliance, not for IRA compliance. And, and we have it there on the screen. So I think, I think in that case, Warren, I would not blame the distributor. I think installers were saying, hey, we think this module qualifies. Let's get going. They asked the distributor for... They might, they maybe didn't even ask the distributor for documentation. I, when I think the challenge here, there's a lot of confusion. Um, I've been at shows, solar shows, where I've seen manufacturers say, hey, our product will help you qualify. No, our product does qualify for the 40% adder or for the 10% adder, 40% total ITC. And so then installers go home from that and say, great, I'm going to use their product, but they don't get documentation. There's no proof of this. And then and then uh, distributors are like, great, other installers are using the product to get it. I'm going to tell my other installers so they also use the product and all this disinformation just spirals and spreads. Right. So and, and you can see right on here, um, you know, that it, that it talks about the BAA, which is great. Um, it's possible that there's going to be some crossover that some some of the BAA requirements will also be IRA requirements. We just don't really know exactly how that works. There hasn't been full guidance given. And right now, BAA compliant product does not fully qualify you for the the IRA requirement. Correct. And there are many acts that uh, that Congress passes that are either by America or invested in, or, or American made. Uh, but really, what you want to see in the letter is very specific language that references the Inflation Reduction Act and the ten percent domestic content. Uh, adder in order for it to qualify. If you see any other language that is not that, that is either by America or any other uh, act, uh, it probably doesn't qualify for the 10% uh, domestic content adder under the Inflation Reduction Act. Right, right. And I think I think the challenge here, one of the challenges is that everyone's excited about this. Yeah. I'm excited about it. I love to see more manufacturing in the US. And I love to see that, that gets you a 10% bump in your tax credit. But excitement is not what's going to help your project qualify. We have to follow the proper documentation. At the end of the day, the big challenge here is that our understanding is the customer is responsible to get, to obtain, and to file this documentation. And they're on the hook if right. the documentation doesn't hold water. So if you get all the documentation from your installer, let's say you don't get the documentation, or even if you do get all the documentation from your installer and it's incorrect, you as the customer are on the hook. Your installer's not on the hook. Your distributor's not on the hook. Your manufacturer's not on the hook. You are on the hook. Now, if you get documentation that says that it qualifies and it actually doesn't, my assumption would be that goes back on the manufacturer. I don't know how that works. But to me, you're, you should be safe if you have the, the proper documentation. As always, talk to your accountant about that. Work that out with them. Sure. And if you've seen or recently, if you're watching this video and you've seen or purchased solar panels or inverters and you have a certification letter uh, and you're wondering about it, share it with us. We'd love to see it. We'd love to uh, review it for you and, and give you some feedback. So I think there's also, Larry, a consensus in the industry that the guidelines as they are today with regards to this domestic content adder are going to change. They have mm -hmm. to change. Manufacturers aren't disclosing their costs. They're not, uh, they're not meeting these requirements. They're trying to get the, uh, meet the requirements in terms of uh, building them and manufacturing them here in the United States. But in terms of divulging their information and certifying these products, we're really not seeing manufacturers jumping in to do that. Right, right. And I, I even had one manufacturer tell me that shipping costs qualify. So if you ship it, to another country to do some of the work, those costs could actually help you qualify. So there's there's so many things that are convoluted that are not the intent, I believe, of what what Congress was trying to do with this bill. Right. And so I think they need to to give out some clarification, make it more clear, but also make it 
make it set it up very well so that it, that it helps American companies and American jobs and and uh, American manufacturing. Yeah. Um, but you're right, Warren. At this point, we haven't found a company that's willing to divulge the costs. And so, from our understanding, there is currently no product in the industry that qualifies for this at this point in time, unfortunately. Correct. So if you're if you're think if you're buying or in the process of buying a solar project right now and you, you're counting on that 10% adder, um, you really want to make sure that you get a certification letter from the manufacturer that clearly states that it qualifies for the domestic content under the Inflation Reduction Act. Otherwise, the onus and the risk is on you when you go to file your taxes and you take that extra 10%. Right, right. And again, we'd love to hear it. If you think you qualify, if you have documentation, send it our way. We'd, we'd love to hear it and see it. We're, we're the first ones that want to see this thing work. Uh, but we don't want to tell people that it works when it doesn't. Correct. So if you're looking at a solar proposal and it has from another contractor, and it has a 10% adder in there for domestic content, you might want to question that currently we're not quoting that additional 10% uh, just because we haven't seen it. And we don't want to put you in a situation where uh, you're basing a financial decision based on that extra 10% when in fact you're not going to get it. Right. Super. Well, thank you, Larry. That's very helpful. Hopefully this provides a little bit of clarity to all of the muddiness or, or mess that's going on with the domestic content adder. But as soon as we learn more, we'll continue to put videos out to, uh, to help you with that. And uh, yeah, thanks again, Larry. Yep. Thank you, Warren.